Christian Leadership Institute. Bishop Dale and Angie Hicks is here with you today, and we have a very special guest on today's program. Angie with the Global Christian Leadership Institute. We're all about training up leaders. Yes, and you're going to meet one today. This is a young man who has a timeless message, the message of Jesus Christ. He's a missionary evangelist, but his methods are very 21st century. When we come back, you're going to meet evangelist David Erson. We are so excited to be with you today. Bishop Angie, we are having a fantastic time as we're training up leaders around the world and you know the Global Christian Leadership Institute. God is really blessing that. There are people around the world that feel the call of God, calling them and tugging in their spirit to go and tell the good news of Jesus Christ, not only in America, but all around the world and many nations of the world. God has given us a format and an entree and the networking to, to be a blessing and train up leaders around the world. And today we have a very special guest. Yes, David Erson. How are you doing? It's so nice to have you. Well, thank you so much for having me. We want to hear all about your ministry. We know the folks are want to know what you're doing. And tell us how God called you. What's your personal experience with Jesus Christ? Yeah, well, I was very blessed to have Christian parents. They always, my dad's a pastor. I was always in church every Sunday, every Wednesday. Always grew up in the church. Um, but something was off in my relationship with the Lord. But that all changed when I was 19 years old. There's a conference in Memphis, Tennessee that I wanted to go to, and I had a friend who had a friend who had a friend who could hook me up with a free place to stay. So I said, praise the Lord, you know, free place to stay, I'll go. <laughs> and uh, I knew nothing about the people I was staying with except two things. I knew that they're my own age, and I knew that they're Christian. But besides that, I was just going on a journey. And I met these people, and I'll tell you one story, because I had many awkward, awkward moments just like this. Uh, I got picked up from the airport by a gentleman named BJ, and BJ's not a big fan of small talk. He pretty much said, hey, David, welcome to Memphis. What's your testimony? I said, oh, my. It's kind of like I just did to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. And, and so I told him, I said, BJ, my, you know, my name's David. I grew up in the church. My dad's a pastor, all this stuff. But then I told him, I said, you know what, BJ? I hate to read in general, and I'm not a huge reader even right now. But I told him, BJ, I, I force myself to read the Bible every single night. And he, uh, usually when I told people that, they'd give me a pat on the back, mm -hmm. saying, even though you don't like to read the Bible, you still do it, that a boy, keep it up. But not BJ. He kind of paused for a sec and looked at me and said, so you're telling me that you force yourself to spend time with your best friend every single day? Wow. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh... This is the first 10 minutes of the trip. <laughs> Sounds like he moves in the prophetic. He gets he, right to the point. He's a very powerful man, that's he for is. sure. You know, and I had several very awkward moments just like that where really honestly made me examine myself and say, okay, am I really walking the walk or am I just talking the talk? Mm -hmm. And I actually called my mom after that all happened. I gave my mom a call and said, mom, I don't believe I'm a Christian. Like, I am not saved. She's like, David, calm down. You're a Christian. I'm like, I don't think I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like I was in the Laodicean church where I was right in the middle, very lukewarm. I wasn't really on fire for the Lord, but I wasn't really doing all kinds of bad stuff though either. I was kind of right in the middle. And I had to make a choice right then and there saying, am I going to be hot for the Lord or am I going to be cold for the Lord? So that, that straightforward talk convicted you. Absolutely. Because the Holy Spirit was there. Absolutely. And it was the timing of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Right. You know. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So what happened after that? You, <clears throat> How did you go to Bible school? What What were the circumstances around that? Yeah, well, the Lord opened up a door for me to go. It's called the International House of Prayer. Not you pancakes. Know, not pancakes. No, I do enjoy pancakes. And I went to the, to the pancake place several times while I was there. But it's <laughs> tremendous nourishment for the spirit. It was, very much so. And what the International House of Prayer uh, has is what's called the global prayer room. They have 24 seven day and night, night and day, live worship music going on that never stops. Can you imagine for 15 years, it has never stopped once. And that's comforting to yeah. know that there's worship going up all the time. Yes. Even right now they are praying as we are doing this interview. Mm -hmm. And so I was engulfed in, 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 in a room full of night and day prayer. Part of the requirement for my education was we had to do 24 hours a week in the prayer room. 
And that university taught me so much. It gave me a foundation in prayer, of course, gave me a foundation in worship, gave me a foundation in theology. I got a four-year uh, Bible degree in theology. You know, I'm so thankful for the International House of Prayer. You know, it part of the reason why I grew so much was, of course, the prayer room, but also I was surrounded by people who were my own age who had the same goal as I did to love in Jesus with all their heart and mind and soul and strength. There's a life changing four years. And, and when you, when you're immersed in that type of environment, the Holy Spirit starts to work. You know, you really get grounded and rooted in what your calling is, what your vision is. Yeah. And, and you're grounded in the word of God. Yeah. You know, they so it's a really, powerful experience. they, they call it actually a greenhouse. Okay. It's a greenhouse of where we are rooted and grounded and we're planted in the Lord and we just grow spiritually because a huge part of that is because of the prayer room. Mm -hmm. We are engulfed in prayer. We are told to, to talk to the Lord, but also sit and listen to the Lord and hear what he has to say and read the Bible and fast and pray. I would highly recommend, if anybody is looking for a Bible college to go to, I would highly recommend the International House of Prayer University. Now, what I'm hearing is, is God is leading you. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord because something very significant happened to you while you were at IHOP. What opportunity for apprenticeship happened there? Yeah. In between my third and fourth year, um, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke contacted Mike Bickle, who is the founder of the International House of Prayer, and said, hey, give me your top 10 evangelists. I want to personally train them for five days. And long story short, I ended up getting selected as part of the top 10. And I went out to Orlando, Florida, where for five days, uh, I, we were trained by evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, by evangelist Daniel Kalenda, and several others. It was, it, there's about 100 people from around the world who got this opportunity. And honestly, when I walked in the room, I had no clue why I was there. Mm -hmm. I was in a room full of spiritual giants. Everybody there, or the most people there, were already doing their own ministry, um, already doing mass crusades, already doing whatever the Lord had called them to do. And here I am, a, 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 a fourth year Bible college student, trying to figure out what I'm going to do in my life. And, uh, and so I went home after that experience, I'm very blessed to be there, but I had no real idea why I was there. So, but fast forward about seven or eight months after that experience, I'm in my last semester of school, and evangelist Daniel Kalinda emails me, but also everybody else who was a part of that training, and said, hey, I'm thinking about doing a year-long apprenticeship program with a few of you guys. Who's interested? So he had a list of requirements, and as I was reading those requirements, I could meet every single one. I said, evangelist Kalinda, I'm very interested in doing the apprenticeship program. So I had a couple phone interviews with evangelist Daniel Kalinda, and again, another very long story short, he selected me to go down to move to Orlando, Florida, and to be personally mentored and trained by evangelist Daniel Kalinda with myself, and there's only five other people who got selected to do this program. And they came from different parts of the world. All over the you world. You know, we have so much respect for CFAN and for that organization, and they're, they're like a soul winning machine. I mean, yeah. their, their crusades are absolutely incredible around the world and the things they're doing here in America. The favor of God was on you and is on you. Yeah. And so you went to the apprenticeship. Tell us a little bit about that and, and how that impacted your life. Man, it was an absolutely amazing experience. I mean, Evangelist Kalinda really taught us everything he possibly knows about crusade evangelism. He taught us what to do, how to do it, what not to do. He taught us all the ins and outs of every aspect of putting on a mass crusade. And he also taught us how to have our own evangelistic ministry of simple stuff of like, what does a website look like? How do you talk to your donors? How about the IT? You know, what, the, what are their role in the, in the ministry? So what happened is for several weeks at a time, we would go to these different departments and that specific department would teach us everything about whatever the department was. And we would rotate to different departments and they would teach us everything. And so to get not only just one aspect of crusade evangelism, but to give us the entire role of how, of what it takes, man, I'm so, I feel so blessed and honored to, to be a part of that ministry and just to be mentored by the best of the best for, for crusade evangelism. They are the very best, you know, and what they do, they've been doing it for over 50 years. That's right. And it's just really remarkable. 
What did you personally learn from Evangelist Kalenta, who is, is, he just flows in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, I've witnessed him in, in several settings, you know, whether it's at large crusades or on his TV program and in talking to people individually. He's just very gifted to be a mentor. Yeah. What did you pull from him that you feel like is going to impact your life going forward in a very special way? Well, one thing about Evangelist Kalenda that I've noticed is how much you value spending time with the Lord. And of course, I already had that as at the International House of Prayer that I wanted to spend time with the Lord every day. But Evangelist Kalenda made, makes a point every day to spend time with the Lord. When we think of evangelist, usually we don't think too much about prayer. We think evangelists do evangelism, and the people who do prayer do prayer. Mm -hmm. But Evangelist Daniel Kalenda really merges the two together very well where he knows that they cannot see millions upon millions of people surrender their life to Jesus if you don't bathe that crusade with prayer. When you were getting ready to graduate from the internship and you said you wanted to ministry yeah. and you told the Lord that you wanted certain things. Yeah. And lo and behold, you show up for a Tuesday night Bible study in, um, in Orlando. And there we are. So tell, tell everybody what happened. It's a very interesting thing. <laughs> I was uh, waiting on the Lord that morning, trying, just spending time with him. And the Lord told me to, to pull up Google and to search how to make your own 501c3. And I said, all right, Lord, it's kind of random. But so I'm here Googling how to start your own 501c3, uh, not really knowing exactly how to do it, although I knew I was supposed to do it. And I went to this Bible study that night and you two were there as the guest speakers. Mm -hmm. And you got up and one of the things you said to me was, one of the things you do is help people start their own 501c3. And I was like, my goodness. I mean, Lord, you are so good. So I came up and talked to you guys afterwards and I told them what I just said about uh, me Googling how to start your own 501c3 and we talked and I'm so blessed and thankful that you two are in my life because you've helped, you've helped me with every aspect of having to start my own 501c3. Well, it's our, it's our privilege. Mm -hmm. I, I want to show folks to really hear and see that the, that the, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Oh, that's he, even, good. he even gives you the thought so that you're prepared for the, mm -hmm. the next thing he's going to do. Yeah. You don't miss it when you're listening. You're talking about prayer. When you listen to the Lord every day, he gives you instructions. Yeah. So yeah. you're not caught off guard and you don't miss anything. Right. Right. So you you got you named your ministry. So talk a little bit about what you've been doing since you've been set up to have making Jesus known evangelistic ministries. Yeah, well, the primary goal of the ministry is to do mass crusade evangelism. You know, when I did the apprenticeship with Evangelist Kalinda, he made it very clear the reason why I'm training you is because I want you to do what I am doing. So the primary purpose of the ministry is to do large mass crusade evangelism, where Lord willing, we can see tens of thousands of people fully surrender their life to Jesus. Yes, and you know, Pastor Bonke always says, or evangelist, I call him pastor, because he's precious to me like a pastor. He always said, we should count, because when you count, that's more people in the kingdom. Yeah, right? Amen. Right? Yeah. So we, we count. Yeah. Yes, you want... You want more people to be saved. And, and it's funny. I've had people ask me before, you know, why do you count salvations? And I, I told them, well, let's go to Acts 2. And Peter says 3,000 people got saved. I'm like, how did they know 3,000 people got saved? They counted. I love it. <laughs> I love it. They counted. And later it said, and numbers were being added daily to those who were being saved. Yeah. So, you know, the evangelism rolled on after that first Absolutely. moment of the Holy Spirit showing up on the scene. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still showing up today. Amen. And we're still counting, praise God. Souls are coming into the kingdom around the world, and we're so excited to be a part of it. We just, David, we bless you. We honor you. We see the favor of God on your life. And we're just delighted to, to partner shoulder to shoulder with you for the gospel's sake. And we bless you as you go forward in Jesus' name. Well, thank you guys very much. I'm very blessed and honored to have you too in my life. Can you look into that camera and pray with the folks before we go? Yeah. But I'm going to pray for you. And then also, if you just want to receive the Lord, I'll, I'll let you repeat it for me. But Holy Spirit, I pray right now for the people watching this Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you would lay it on their hearts, God.
to fully surrender their life to you. Yes. Holy Spirit, I pray that if people are half in or half out, that they would realize that a Laodicean church is not a church at all. Father God, I pray that people would fully repent and give their hearts to you. And even right now, if you want to give your life to Jesus, to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I fully give you my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died and that you rose again. And Holy Spirit, I give you all of me. In Jesus' my name. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged, saints. The next generation God is bringing, raising up young men and women to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So know that our future is in good hands spiritually as we're sending people around the world to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you again, David, for being with us today. Blessings.